Hello, I'm Alex Follett and I'm Terry Lawson and this is the 20th episode of 51 and a half tips for a beginner property investor. Today we would like to talk about stress, uh, giving an example of a property we've recently purchased. It's a five bedroom detached house in Wallasey near Liverpool and it was a repossessed property. So if you look at the time scales of when we first viewed it, it was 31st of December 2016 and we completed on it on the 1st of March 2017. Uh, really from this point of view it was a really quick turnaround for first viewing the property and completing on it, but it was very very stressful. And uh, there were several factors to it being stressful. So first of all, is it was a repossessed property and it was sold by a bank. And uh, when the property is repossessed, the bank is obliged to accept any higher offer that they receive. So actually, when we agreed on buying, when our offer has been accepted, it has been accepted at £87,000. When we actually completed on it, we completed at £90,000. So now we're looking at it and, you know, it's okay, it's still good price, but when you're in the middle of the purchase and the price goes up and you're trying to, uh, you know, chase all the stakeholders, it just gets too much. So I found it really stressful. Uh, I think Terry found it less stressful than yeah. I did. Why just a bit. That? I think because uh, in my day-to-day -day work, I have that amount of pressure on me um you kind of cope with it differently um so i i i saw it it was stressful and i could understand what alex um speaks about but it, it, it's it's something that i deal with day in day out although it might be in a slightly situ different situation just to clarify you know my job is stressful as well i do sales so it is stressful, but actually Terry is a pharmacist, so she actually is responsible for people's lives every day. So it is stressful, more stressful than my job probably. Um, so in terms of the timeline, um, our offer was accepted on the 13th of January. And then it took them almost two weeks to send the contract to the solicitor, to our solicitor. And this is when the countdown has begun. So the bank actually given us two to three weeks to exchange, exchange. or to complete. Uh, and we've exchanged in 28 days. So on the same day when our solicitors received the contract, they sent the searches out and the searches came back within two weeks. So we were actually ready to exchange. They received the contract on the 26th of January. Searches came back on the 9th of February. We were ready to exchange on the 10th of February. But in the meantime, on the 3rd of February, the bank received a high offer. It was £88,000. And I felt, you know, I just was really scared. I think I could barely sleep and I, I was just so tense. But actually looking at it, I thought, you know, what could happen? Okay, they can maybe give a higher offer that we can't accept. Okay, we we'll lose this house. But, you know, it's just when you're in the middle of it, it's hard to deal with the stress. Uh, we were also getting a bridging loan and uh, we thought it was going to be easy and quick, but it wasn't. So don't believe when people tell you that. A bridging loan can be done overnight or in a couple of days. Um, they'll give you the money and you can complete on your transaction. Rubbish, total rubbish. It's not the experience. That not what we experienced at all. At all. But if you're, if I think we were going into the situation believing that we could get the bridging and everything sorted within say a week from the time that we it was agreed that they would lend us the money to um, exchanging to completing, um, we had the mindset that it would only take a week, two weeks, the most. And realising that that wasn't the situation and other things that 
slowed down the process, um, did alleviate the, um, elevate the stress levels. And it, it just made us think that, well, you know, when people tell you things are easy and it's like buying for cash in certain situations, you just need to take it with a pinch of salt and just go with it but not expecting it to be as such. I think we've learned that we just expect whatever curveball comes your way and just deal with it the best way you can. So actually in our situation, we were ready to exchange two weeks after the contracts received by the solicitor. Having bridging finance have added another two weeks to that time scale and also it added £2,000 to the cost of the house. Um, it added a lot of stress. So I would say, you know, I will want to use bridging finance in the future, but I think what we need to do is to make sure that we use the right company who understands that we are buying a repossessed property, that speed actually means a lot, and that it won't be taking them three days or four days to come back on a query that the employee solicitor who cares about the customer because we paid two thousand pounds for the solicitor fee for the bridger and actually at the end they said um, oh because you use a different solicitor to sign a personal guarantee and they did tell us to use a different solicitor to sign personal guarantee we'll charge you another three hundred pounds so um, we were paying a lot of money for a service that you know wasn't very good the solicitor just wasn't around now I have to say that the best thing about this transaction it was the convincing solicitor that we used it was Sam Hawking and uh, there is a lady called Beth and Walters who works for Sam she was just amazing she was really you know she had empathy for us she I felt that she was working for us and trying to chase and do and you know she did the best she could so we'll definitely use her again and uh, you know I just hope in the future we can find the bridging uh, lender that can work quickly and that can you know take the interest of the clients mm. um, especially when you're telling when they know that it's a repossessed property and time is off the essence for them to act quickly because of that, that would have saved us money um, at the end of the whole process. But I, I honestly don't think they even, I won't say cared, but it didn't come into it. Um, an example of, of their, what do you say, their work ethics. They, were, they, real, they understood that it was a repossessed property. They um, instructed us to get a surveyor to value the property, and that was done on the was the ninth ninth of February. We got the results back, and it wasn't till about almost a week later that they then decided to get their surveyor out to visit the same property. During that time, we were waiting to exchange contracts. If, if they were thinking of the customer and knowing that the prices are going up, keep going up, and they're asking us why is the purchase price going up? Because you take too freaking long, that's why. <laughs> they, so if they had just liaised and just had their surveyor, maybe a day or two days after they got ours, then we probably would have saved a couple of grand. But we couldn't exchange until they had got their survey in to do their evaluation what they wanted to do so that also took up time yeah so the problem that they had was with the dump so now we've learned if there is a dump we need to have dump proof course in the schedule of works from the builder because it wasn't there because the builder said well yes it was dumped, but i was going to rebuild everything anyway so it didn't have to be there so we had to put the dump proof course into the schedule of works. So in the future, we'll always do it. And I think what this experience gave us is the resilience uh, to the stress, at least for me. And we also know what sort of things might come. So actually, we'll be now sending all the things that they asked us for 
in advance, have everything ready in advance. And uh, I'm glad that it was in our first property. So the first property we bought it with mortgage. And uh, I think it's just really made sure that we're more resilient to stress in the future. And, uh, you know, I hope, yeah, I think we'll use bridging finance again, but just make sure we use the right yeah, bridging finance. Mm. Uh, and uh, if we're buying a repossessed property, it's going to be very stressful. So otherwise, you know, we're now... Uh, started the refurbishment and uh, yeah we'll be sharing our progress with you soon. as usual so thank you for listening bye <laughs>